Well, someone asked me, since I made the video on the uh, concave side to uh, last video, I did it on uh, a different bismuth disc on the concave side. They said, well, test it on the flat side, which is a good idea. Maybe I should have done that in the past video. So, they wanted to know if it would work the same on the flat side, and it does, and this side is flat as a... Uh, Flat as a piece of paper except for the little nub here in the center. Everything else is completely flat. So here you'll see our green marked pole and if I tap it off clockwise. And it is kind of hard to grab a three millimeter magnet. And our other pole marked black. I assume you can see that. Kind of clockwise. Let's do that again. So hard to grab and then get the polarity just sitting right. Here we go. So just tap it counterclockwise. Let's put it on the green marked pole. Up. Here we go. Tap it. Knock it off slowly so you could see it instead of just tilting it. Okay, you'll see it start to move clockwise. Yeah. Clockwise, there we go. Let's do that fast since you think it's just a tapping motion. So I'm sure someone will say that. We'll say well, it's just a tapping motion. So let's do it fast. Since I'm filming in 720p high def, you should be able to watch it in slow mo. Clockwise. That was even hard for me to see. Clockwise. And let's do it fast on the black mark pole. Here we go. Counterclockwise, no tapping, just letting it roll off. Now the reason this is happening is the bismuth is um, pushing away the centrifugal divergent magnetism. Remember centrifugal, if this was a magnet, this the edge would be the centrifugal divergent magnetism. Bismuth, as I showed you three videos ago, is attracted to the centripetal convergent because bismuth is as attracted to a magnet as another magnet is. It just expresses it in a different way. Watch three videos ago where I proved that to you. Bismuth is the universe's most naturally diamagnetic material element, but it is diamagnetic for principle of being displacing centrifugal divergent magnetism, not due to dielectricity, because bismuth has an extremely high neutron count. Bismuth is the most stable heavy element. Uh, actually, it uh, has a half-life of 20 billion billion years. It eventually will uh, degrade into thallium, but it's still 20 billion billion years. It's basically stable. So, anyway, let's roll it off here. Black, you saw that counterclockwise. No tapping, just rolling it off. So, here we have a flat surface. Same thing happens. No tapping. See, green pull up right now. I'm just tilting it, letting gravity take a hold. Clockwise, that's right. So what's happening is, is the bismuth is pushing away the centrifugal divergent magnetism of this tiny little cube. And what is happening resultantly, since this is an extra, you couldn't do this with a huge cube magnet, obviously, because gravity would just roll right off. But because this tiny little magnet is so lightweight, what happens is you're able to see the inverse spin of either pole on the little cube magnet because, A, we have the universe's most fundamentally uh, diamagnetic element, bismuth, and a very low mass cube magnet. So you're able to see, just using one magnet, no electricity, no nothing, just two objects, a bismuth disc, and a little cube magnet. Here we got the green. Which pole we got? I think it was a green side. At my angle, it's sometimes hard to see the green or the black. And it was the green. Let's put it on the black again. So what's happening is the bismuth is pushing away, obviously, on the magnet. The bismuth doesn't care whether it's the North Pole or the South Pole, the magnet, the bismuth only quote unquote hates um, divergent centrifugal magnetism. But as it's lifting away, of course it's not levitating, but as it's lifting away and falling away from gravity, what happens is, is that either the inverse spin of one pole or the other is letting the magnet spin as it's falling towards the gravity, either clockwise or counterclockwise. Here we have our black side, and see, counterclockwise. So, doesn't matter whether it's rounded side or the flat side same thing happens so that's what's happening 
Bismuth is pushing away on centrifugal magnetism. Bismuth doesn't give a damn whether it's clockwise or counterclockwise uh, magnetism. It just doesn't like, like obviously is not the correct term, but doesn't like uh, centrifugal divergent magnetism. So it pushes away regardless. But since a magnet has inverse spin centrifugally and obviously inversely to either side proportional centripetally, but we're only interested in the centrifugal divergent magnetism, which is what the magnet, what the bismuth is pushing against. But since the magnet has extremely slow, low mass, three millimeter cube neodymium, it, you are able to see it expressing its pushing away as it's falling towards gravity and being pushed away by the, the diamagnetism of the bismuth. It is either pushing away against the lowest pressure gradients, clockwise or counterclockwise. That's why we're getting inverse spin off our little magnet. Green side up, always clockwise. Black doesn't matter which pole it is. It's just inverse spin. Anyway, it's the first time you've ever seen this on the internet. The first time you've ever seen it, period. Proof after proof after proof, this is just another nail in the coffin, which she was already buried, and the proof anyway, she's already buried and nailed shut and buried uh, quite a long time ago, but somebody always wants more proof. But it's not interested in proving anything to skeptics. Skeptics are never going to believe anything. They're firmly entrenched in believing in their sacred cows, QED, quantum nonsense, BS, relativity. It's all crap. The universe is really simplex. Electricity, magnetism, electricity, which is a hybrid of electricity and magnetism. Electricity and dielectric I mean, elect dielectricity and magnetism. And gravity mass, which is a condensate of dielectricity and stellar and galactic formations. It takes a great deal of wisdom to simplify things, reduce them down into their most basic forms. Here we see, here we go. Always the same. Don't believe me? Do it yourself. Smelt your own bismuth. Get your own little three... It obviously works with these uh, tiny little neodymiums, but they're only 1.5 millimeter, but I can't even see it to market, much less uh, when you see it on the video, even in 1080p is too small to see. So anyway, it works regardless, but it works because of these small magnets have extremely low mass, and so what happens is the low mass in proportionate to the, the extreme uh, di uh, diamagnetic properties of the bismuth is allowing you to see as the object is falling towards gravity is allowing you to see the inverse spin on the poles of this little cube magnet which actually got a really high gauss rating i got the green again i meant to grab the black pole it's hard to grab a three three millimeter cube neodymium hard there we go black see counterclockwise you saw it here first Good idea on using the flat surface. Still the same thing, doesn't matter if it's this side, doesn't matter if it's a flat side. Same. Yes, folks, you're seeing the correct nature of what magnetism is, what a magnet truly is, how it works, why it works, etc., etc., etc. I will keep expanding, expanding, and I have a mountain of material to add. A mountain. So I'll keep presenting as time allows. I'm working hard as I can. I'm killing myself, quite frankly, that on top of experimenting. So, anyway, thanks for watching.